YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. This afternoon we're just going to do a little, a quick reseal on a Massey Ferguson 175 power steering cylinder. Now, uh, this is a friend's tractor, they just asked me could we drop a seal kit in. Um, uh, they're in a lot of the tractors, probably from 19, or oh, actually from the model 65, um, right up to the 188 I would imagine. Um, where the this sits in behind your front grill and in front of your radiator. Um, they have a little valve. There's a little valve on top and this push-pull here that determines whether you go left or right. Um, if you're having trouble going one way or another with these valves, um, drill that out. You can buy a complete new turn buckle. Um, but before you need, before you do that, you can just drill it out just to a slight oversize, 3 16th I think I've done them to, and that'll take the slop out. Then if you have a steering that's steering to the left and not the right, you, I can't remember which way it goes, but you either lengthen or shorten this turn buckle. Then if it goes right, not left, you've gone too far. So the adjustment between your left and your right steering is just done by this turn buckle here. So it's important to have no wear in the end here and that will give you a nice even um, a nice even balance between your left and right hand steering. So um, stay tuned, we'll pop it apart, whack a seal kit in and um, yeah I'll, I'll show you what I can along the way. Well this is what your turnbuckle looks like. If you have a look at the hole right at this end there, I'll take him over in front of the toolbox a bit, yep, it's just about worn out. So this old tractor didn't have much of a chance of steering very well. With all the movement here, um, the steering wheel would be moving and by the time it took all the slop up, there'd be no, um, no travel really. So we're gonna put a new one of these in. Um, we'll order it today, we'll have it tomorrow and, and it's just something that can be put in just before the ram slides in. Now there's two parts to doing up this cylinder. The bottom part is the main cylinder that moves back and forth. And the top part here, this is your control valve. And the control valve just unbolts off the top of the main valve. Use a half inch spanner. Um, they're 5 16th UNF threads. So a half inch spanner fits. And if you undo these fellas, and don't drop the washer like I just did, then the valve comes off. Now, there's a couple of O-rings underneath that help it seal. And in some models, there's also a gasket there. But because this just had the O-rings, um, that's all we'll be doing. Okay, the kit we're going to fit here today, it's a Bearco kit. Um, Bearco is an Australian tractor aftermarket company. And their part number is B2906. And it says, PS cylinder, O-ring repair kit, um, UK type um, 185165265 etc so but um, yeah this you can buy a kit just to do the bottom half of the cylinder or you can buy a kit to do the top half of the cylinder this kit does everything it, it has enough bits and pieces you know the dust felt and all that to um, yeah look to pretty well cover the whole show so anyway we'll pull everything apart and yeah we'll try and get rid of most of these parts Now what I've done here, I've actually turned the ram upside down. The valve used to be on the top. The valve's now at the bottom with these ports open and there's a pot down on the ground to catch the oil. And the flat here helps in assisting to hold it from turning. But what I like to do now while that pot's there, excuse me, what I like to do now while that pot's there is actually manually pull that ram in and out. And what we do by doing that is just drain any oil out and it just makes it a bit tidy when you pull it apart. It doesn't want to fly all over the bench anyway. Now in the front here there's a circlip and to get it out we grab our circlip pliers. Now when you're using circlip pliers use the biggest ones that will do the job. If you're too lazy you go and get the little ones with the tiny little points on them. It won't be long and the points will be broken off and 
you won't even have a good set of pliers, I'll be just rubbish. So use the biggest set that you have, that will do the job properly. And pull the circlip out. Now sometimes there's a little burr where that circlip is sat if it's moving. I can't feel one here today. So what I do now, I, we've already got the oil out of the cylinder. There we go. You could pop it out with air, but I don't know, I've always done it this way. I just like to do it that way for some reason. Um, popping it out with air, you'd have to be careful and catch it. But anyway, that's one bit out. Right, you just saw us get this out. Now, this is your piston. This is inside the cylinder. Oil pushes on this way, on this one way to push it out. Oil comes on the other side of the piston to push it back in. And there's an O-ring on there. There's a castellated nut with a split pin and a washer to hold this piston on. Just check that's tight. In this case it is. Um, there is a little O-ring under there, but it'll, it'll be fine. Um, this O-ring here will be replaced. Now on the gland here, we'll move on to the gland. Um, on the, in the front here, there's a dirt excluding seal, a scraper seal. It's quite hard. It's made of hard stuff. Um, they take a bit of getting out. You've nearly got to wreck them to get them out. Then the next piece, that just slides off. The next seal just comes out like that. And if we have a look, that's why it was leaking oil. So anyway, we'll... Um, We'll give everything a bath and start putting a few O-rings back in this little section. Quite an easy and quick job. Just something of interest you may be able to see is, can you see the circlip grooves, the circlip marks, and where that's turned over its lifetime? There's been different positions where the circlip's been in a couple of different places and it's just worn a, just a little mark all around. So when I put it together, I'll try and not line it up with them. I'll try and find a new spot. Okay, we've cleaned this up now. Now, the old dirt excluding seal was a hard neoprene, and it's very hard material. Um, in the kit, the new one is a softer rubber compound. So when you use the hard one, you had to actually get a socket and bash it around to try and get it in. Now with these fellas, you just slide him in under there. Now, you just got to make sure that the edge of the seal goes in under the lip. There's a little lip there to hold it in. So we just put a little bit of pressure on the seal and that lip goes under, no worries. Not a lot of effort there, it's just, just making sure it's home. One part done. Beautiful. Now, moving on to this gland, um, this is where your main oil seal goes. And the main oil seal, it, it sits in in like that. Um, it actually should go that way so the, the hard lip is towards the oil. So we can pop that in like that. Then the front plate actually holds that captive but when you go to resealing this outside groove here you'll notice that there's a o-ring which is this one here and there's a backup washer. Now whenever you come across an O-ring and a backup washer, the O-ring goes towards the oil. The backup washer, it protects the O-ring, so when the, when the oil comes on the O-ring, 
the pressure of the oil can distort the O-ring and want to make it distort over this steel corner. And so with the backup washer being there, um, it protects the corner so the O-ring doesn't get cut. Now in this kit, that's what they've given us as a backup washer. That's a piece of gasket. That's junk. A, a, a washer like this one, that's a rubber neoprene. Um, they, they, well, they can be white nylon type of stuff. Um, this is a nylon, a, a black nylon, and I'm going to leave that one on. The one that's on there is far better quality than this one. And I might just go through the exercise to see if I can put it on without breaking it. But I bet you can't. I, I reckon. See, that's got to go over there, and there's no stretch. So, a piece of gasket paper is not going to stretch. Look at that. So, I'll have to talk to Bear Car about that. Um, that's, that's not very good at all. That's unusable. Um, where this... The O-ring's fine. The O-ring goes on. And... Because that backup washer is in good order, I'm happy to use it again. But, um, yeah, it just could be done better. Um, I will have a look at the Sparex kit now and just see. And um, see if they have a neoprene backup. And what we do when we, um, when we do tractor parts, or, or when my living is selling tractor parts. I, I own a business called Queensland Tractor Spares. And... We sell a lot of tractor parts from Bearco and Sparex and from time to time we come across things like this which we don't know about until we've done the job ourselves. Once we've done the job and we realise that, we'll have that kit flagged now and when we look that kit up on our computer system there'll be a little flag come up that says don't use the backup washer's junk. And from time to time we will we'll rebuy this kit um, just to check whether the backup washer is junk or not. If it's still junk, we'll just return it to the supplier with a note saying it's, it's no good. But um, now I'll go to Sparex, which is one of our other suppliers, and see if they have a better quality backup washer there. Because the, the one supplied in that kit is clearly unusable. You can't sell a part or a seal kit with an unusable part in it. So stay tuned for that one. Right, now the main piston packing. And it's just an O-ring. It's that easy. Now the kit. There's a new O-ring there. Now, whenever you fit an O-ring, just have a feel and make sure it's got protrusion. It has to stick, with it sitting in the bottom of the groove, it has to stick outside, <coughs> pardon me, it has to stick outside the groove of the piston. So you must have protrusion. Um, for that O-ring to seal, it must stick out outside this aluminium piston. Well, when you're a diesel fitter or a tractor mechanic, um, sometimes you'll put a part in and you'll move on a bit, then you'll come back and think about it. And you'll, you'll think about your job backwards and forwards all the way. And, and now and then something doesn't sit right with you, so you, you should follow that instinct and go back and have a look at it. And what wasn't sitting well with me was this O-ring. The O-ring on the piston in the in the bear cove kit. So I thought, oh yeah, it's a little bit loose there. And the protrusion was there, but just not not very much protrusion. And I, I would like to see more. So I pulled the O-ring off again and I found the old O-ring. That's the difference in thickness. So, the O-ring supplied It's all gone now. Okay, the O-ring supplied is 3.2 millimetres. 
The O-ring taken out is 4.86 millimetres and the O-ring groove is 4.85 millimetres. So we're not going to use it. Um, we'll do a trip to town. I've actually ordered up a, a Sparex kit which is another brand and um, I'm airbagging a Sparex kit up now um, just to get this job done and I'll run through that tomorrow and just see what the difference is but so so far with this kit the o-ring is too small for the piston it's just not correct and the backup for the main gland nut is rubbish it's just paper so there'll be a little note on part number B2906 not to use it um, w another thing too is the soft and hard o-rings and and 70 duro or durometer is the hardness of an o-ring and um, for for light duty that's fine but a lot of steering in that because of the heat in that they're 90s and this o-ring here is obviously a 70 this one's obviously a 90 so being a 90 it's a harder o-ring surface this 90 will wear better than this 70 so um, I'd say what's happened is they've gone and bought these kits from somewhere um, India Turkey yeah who knows and um, they probably haven't had a cylinder to put them on so um, with Bearco the company they have a um, they have a technical fella Bruce and, and he's great at his job and we really appreciate him being there but um, I'll ring up Bruce and have a bit of a yarn about this and, and they're pretty quick to jump on things and make things right but um, for the moment this B2906 power steering um, seal kits is just junk so we'll get a Sparex one up um, I'll go through the stuff in the Sparex one and I'll, I'll let you know what the difference is um, because I'll probably be in a bit of a rush to put this together now because of this it's, it's put the pressure on um, they have to travel 130 kilometres to pick this ram up and, and they've made an appointment to come into town tomorrow afternoon so um, that's why I'm home this afternoon popping this in for them and <coughs> pardon me um, so I'll, I'll get the seals tomorrow and I'll probably do a rush job and, and get everything ready so I can just pop an o-ring on and slide the whole thing together um, I, I may be able to film it um, we'll just see but um, I will tell you the difference on the kits though I'll, I'll try and keep all these old parts and we'll do a comparison between a Sparex um, power steering cylinder reseal kit and the Bearco one that we purchased I will go ahead however and at this stage and we will reseal the um, control valve and um, we'll just see if our luck's any better with that one so for the moment even though we can't put the main piston o-ring on we can put the gland seals in and we can slide that on the shaft ready so tomorrow when we get this it's just a matter of sliding it in and putting the circlip on now one thing i would like to point out is that's see how hard that is to pull now so that should seal oil nicely now just to explain how this valve works a little bit there's a there's a pin going through here and that turn buckle goes on the top and pushes and pulls and because it's an open centre hydraulics we have two hoses here um, open centre hydraulics means that the pump when you start the tractor the pump starts pumping oil and it might pump it up this one and as long as the tractor's running um, the valve is open centre so it comes through here through the control valve here and back to the tank so while the engine's running or while that pump's going there's a constant flow of oil through this entire system so with the valve here in neutral position there's two oil, two oil holes here um, one that's where they are on a cylinder one just goes straight through straight through to there and the other one is piped up to the back to push on the back of the piston and it looks like they've had a bit of trouble here one time that's been brazed up but so to head oil one way or another 
what has to happen is this valve has to move. Let's see if I can find a punch the right size or close enough. There we go. So, so at the moment we're sitting in neutral position. And if we want to turn one way, this valve opens. So this valve comes up. When it comes up, the oil coming through the hoses is diverted to one of these ports. And the other port on the other side of the cylinder to this second hole, the port there is opened up too. So what we have is the pressure oil comes in this one, goes out that one and back to sump. Then when we turn the steering wheel the other way, it just goes down. And that's how much movement you have. There's, there's very little movement to do the job. And so that's why this turnbuckle, wherever I've put it now, here it is, this turnbuckle is so important. Because it sits in the end here and works its way up and down, a little bit of movement, a little bit of movement in these holes um, can make a big difference. Um, a lot of the movement on the valve was taken up, just taking up the slop first. So, but anyway, we'll move on. We'll pull this valve apart. We'll undo him here and pop him out. A ball will go bing on us. We'll have to look out for that. And um, we'll see if the seal's fit for this part of it. Well, I've undone the bolts on the plate here. And now this just comes out like that. And there's a spring here. And the idea of that spring is it sets your neutral position. So that spring just holds the valve in a place where the oil can come in one side, go around the land here and continue back to tank. And the return pipe, um, well actually it'll come in one, it'll go out the other. But there'll be no load. Then when we want oil to shift, we move this. It opens up one port, blocks another one. And away she goes. So there's a little O-ring here. And there should be a little seal up here, I believe. And then on the other end, there's a circlip in the back here. Um, we pull that out. There's often a little felt up in there. Um, and there's a tiny hole in the centre. And that's so when you push and pull the valve, you don't get a, an air lock or a lock up in the back here. So that lets the back of the valve breathe. So we'll go and find some pliers and we'll pop that apart and try and get to a bare housing. Okay, I've been and cleaned the valve up. Um, this is the only O-ring on the valve. What I thought was a seal up here was a washer. And, and that's fair enough too. As, as the oil is in this area, that O-ring just stops it coming past. So we'll pop that off and we'll check the kit out and see what we have. I've put a new O-ring on the valve. We have good protrusion there. The valve is about the same hardness as the one that came out. Um, look, you've got to expect them to be a little bit softer because the other one's hard and over age, but um, explaining the difference is, is a little bit hard, but um, as, as they do work hard and get hard and crack, but, but look, this is good. There's nothing wrong with that part of it. The, I've left this bit of wire on the pipe because um, that might be a mark they've left there for themselves. Just so they know which pipe goes where or something like that. And where the valve goes in, this is the other end. And we'll find a set of circlip pliers again. This little circlip holds the holds it all in. There it is. And that's the end of the washer. And see there's a piece of felt in there. The piece of felt stops any dirt from coming up inside the valve. It does let air out, but it doesn't let the dirt in. And that feels quite good through there. Should be an O-ring in here, I believe, somewhere. I just can't quite feel it. There it is. Now 
There you go. That's the other end, that's looking good. You can see straight through there. We'll take this little O-ring off the back. And we'll go and give this a bath. We've been over, we've given the valve a bit of a bath, a tidy up, and in the end, you have a washer with an orifice in it, a felt, and another washer with an orifice in it. Now, I'm believing this felt's going to be too fit, oh, sorry, too fat. I'll, um, I'll just see how we go. Um, what I better do before I do that though is put the O-ring inside here. That'll be a tad embarrassing. Send it home and it's pouring oil out. Okay, the O-ring's in. It's sitting in the groove nicely and you can feel protrusion. We've got the O-ring in. Now we put a, one of the washers in. Now this is how fat the felt is. This is how fat the old felt was. And so if we stick this in here and try and put a circlip in there There is no way we can compress that without putting in a press or something to do that. So what I'll do is I'll slice this long ways and I'll bring it to a little bit thicker than what the other one is. The other one's been in there a long, long time and it's, um, it's been quite compressed. So. I'll, I'll cut this and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. There's the new row, there's a the new felt. Should be able to put that in. Put the washer in, yep. And I think I should just be able to get that circlip in. I don't know if you know, probably worth mentioning, is when you put a circlip in, there's a right way and a wrong way to put a circlip in. Now, if you grab a circlip from anywhere you've got one hidden, have a look at it. There'll be a, one edge will be slightly rounded and the other corner will be sharp. And when you look at the holes in between your, your holes to put the circlip pliers in, you'll notice they're tapered. And when they're tapered, if, if they're tapered this way, and you go and put your circlip groove in there, your circlip plier in there, they don't seem to want to bite very well. It's easier for them to slip out. So um, that's not as important as making sure that the rounded edge goes away from the load. The front corner, the front has a quite a sharp corner on it. The front corner, is what you want to bite in to hold the circlip in. So if the load is this way, you want the sharp edge on the front. So that bites into your circlip groove a bit tighter. So we'll, we'll try and get this in. And this is the sharp edge to the front. That feels like it's locked in nicely. I'm 
Yep, just bumping it from the other side. That's not going anywhere. So we'll turn him around and um, we'll put the spool in. Okay, here's our spool with the new O-ring on again. I've put some lubrication on it. And when we get to the O-ring, see, we can just, we can feel the crush on that O-ring. So we know that's right, we know it's not going to leak. So there's two quarter UNF bolts that hold this little cap on here. The valve on like the Massey 250 and all that that's up the steering column where this bolts to the ram in behind the grill. The Massey 250 and I think some of the industrials, the 40s, um, they have this valve up the steering column. And it's pretty well the same setup. The, the one kit does it all. So we'll just nip these up. When you're doing something like this up, try and do it up even. I just make sure everything's sitting in place better. I don't have a room for a ring spanner between the, the head of the nut, or head of the bolt, and the valve. Right, that still runs free. It's free in the ball. We'll pop a pin through, a pin punch. And what we're looking for is we did this before we pulled it apart. We're just gonna make sure we have the same travel. Need to give him a bit, a few more pound on that vice. Look, that feels good. It's springing back to neutral. Now, if you blow down one of <coughs> pardon me, if you blow down one of these pipes, and I'll just do it, we have air coming out the other pipe. And so, what we know by doing that is that this valve is sitting in neutral. The oil's coming in one pipe, out the other, unrestricted. There's, there's no um, there's no resistance to flow. So as far as our kit goes, our B, where's my number once more? My B2906, the Bearco kit, um, as far as the kit goes, for the valve it's fine. The O-rings feel good, they have good protrusion. Um, we have O-rings for in here. They protrude well. So that's okay, but the problems are the piston o-ring and the backup washer. So look, that's about all I can do. There's no use bolting this on to the valve yet and until we put the piston and all in the valve because all that'll happen is we'll get a, a lock-up, a bit of a hydraulic lock-up with the air and um, it won't work. So I'll have everything ready so I can just pop two o-rings in. I'll pop the o-ring on the main piston really and I can um, three bolts here, put the circlip on the front and we'll be away. Well there you have it, that's all we can do with this job just at the moment. Very disappointing. Um, yeah, I sneak home to do these jobs sometimes, um, to just try and help friends and family and um, people we've got to know over the years, just do a quick little job for them, just to help them out. And um, I'm certainly glad I didn't sell them the kit and um, tell them how easy it was to fit and they went home to fit it. If they got home they may not have, well everyone has different mechanical abilities and if they got home they may have fitted it up um, not known that the main piston o-ring wasn't adequate and complained later on or went looking or spent money on something else when the tractor was still weaving down the road. Um, I'm, I'm glad that we found that here, we can deal with it now. Um, we won't sell that kit again until we know it's right. Um, 
having a couple of suppliers means that we can actually look at the Sparex kit now and see if it's suitable. Um, if it's not, well, we'll just make the kits ourselves, I think, um, which is an option we have, but it's so much easier just to buy the kit with everything in it than to sit down and go do all the homework, go and O-ring this size and O-ring that size and, and um, <coughs> pardon me, try and, try and head down that, that course with it. But um, I'll take this in tomorrow. I'll, I'll have it so when the Sparex seal kit comes, I, I have ordered a Sparex seal kit, so when the Sparex seal kit comes, um, I'll be able to have a quick look and just see how it is and um, yeah I'll, I might just tack it on the end of this clip we'll see how we go but look thanks for watching um, shame it didn't work out this time we will um, we will get it together and um, I'll probably just take a photo or something like that of the completed job but um, look please subscribe leave comments down the bottom and um, yeah get to know us a bit better I'll catch you later eh?